The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. One more day being renewed to the praise of the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so that the spiritual sacrifices, which could be very readily acceptable by Lord God the Father in heaven through His Son on the cross, as well as we as a living sacrifice on this earth, one more day being renewed on our part in the divine energy and in the divine health which our Lord bestows upon us to really, readily living and walking in the Spirit could yield the fruit of the Spirit so that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ should not be ashamed on our part to be called as their God. Dear brethren, this is what we have today. The first, the second day of the week of Monday. Actually, it should be the beginning of the Pentecost, the beginning of the church day. After the post-resurrection days of 40, what we have learned in the previous things, the 10-day silent gap, and today, once again, we resume the starting of the first day of the church, which has occurred 2,000 years back, exactly on the day of Pentecost of AD 33, after our Lord was being crucified, and then later on resurrected and ascended into the heaven, and then after a 10 days gap, this church age was being a sudden insertion or a sandwich between the first advent of our Lord and between the second advent of our Lord. And these both things have really cut short the 70th week and have been postponed it to till the rapture of this special species which is called as new spiritual species in Christ. The reason many people may have many things to tell in the Bible, the ultimate reasons what we can tell as a one who have learned the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher faithfully being prepared, being taught under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the reason what we can tell is nothing but angelic conflict. Because of the angelic conflict. It was for a true realm that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came to fulfill His promise, and He did it. As our Lord God the Father promised for us in Genesis 3.15, the seed of a woman. Then later on, it is for the Israelites whom our Lord has promised through Abraham that definitely they are going to rise a nation. Why these nations have been risen? In this angelic conflict, our Lord's will is that everyone should be saved. But since there are many people who will not believe in the predestination of our Lord, because it is according to their volition whether they can go for the reality of being saved or whether they can really be a failure not to be saved. It is their evolution. So the point is, those who to those who have been chosen, some of the men, they went on not to obey the word of the Lord. They fell into the idolatry worship. And to rise the right nation, our Lord chose Israelites. But the Israelites also failed to destroy the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, and the other things what we have learned. These men have really lost the true integrity of the word of the Lord, and they also became one among those brethren who were on this earth. And later on, our Lord's will was that on this earth, after proving to Satan that absolutely he is not, he wanted to take a trial one. A trial one was the Israelites, but the people, they failed. And when our Lord Lord came to this earth, the people really did not recognize him as king, but they had XYZ reasons to say what it might be and what it was and what it is not. But later on we know, when it came to the church, it is we, we have been believing in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we have been accepting him. That is what it has been told in Luke chapter 19 verses 46 and 47. They might have been really worthy for that to know, but they couldn't understand it. They have let it gone. The same thing is happening today again into the church. There is Israelites have let it gone. Now the church, knowingly, because of the great error of ignorance, they are really letting it go. They are letting it go to such kind of a great extension, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, they have really taken that which is not worth. In today's pulpits, we don't have even origin of such. Why have I been kept alive over here after salvation? Why you have been born in this earth? What is the work you have with the angels? What is this angelic conflict? And men do not even understand. They think only in one realm, what was the need for God to come on this earth to save the sinners? And they want to say, why is it that every man has been sinned? 
the Genesis 3.15 promise many people do not understand. When Adam sinned, the human race sinned through him. For by one man sin entered into the world. To save the sinners who have been deceived by Satan through Eve, our Lord came to this world to save you so that you should have the true glory and the true eternal life. Not understanding this real angelic conflict, men have many things and much things. But later on, our Lord really changed the subjects into the intensified stage of the angelic conflict after winning the battle on the cross. Till the middle of the tribulation of seven years period, which will be hurled down from heaven till that time Satan has access to the heaven. They have much things to be taught. Our Lord has kept in this church age a new spiritual species, and those are we. Given the privilege of the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Given the privilege of indwelling Trinity in us, not just Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Lord God, the Father, Lord God, the Son. And we have much more to learn, much more to think, much more to understand. But the great problem with us is we are ignorant, and we want to tell you something, you are arrogant to learn it saying that you know everything and anything. No, in the church age, the things have been totally changed. We are royalty, you believe it or not. We are all like any ketesis, you like it or not. We have a purpose and a mission like Lord God the Father who has sent his son on this earth. And as Lord God the Father has given to his son the mission to accomplish, before the foundation of the world who has been ordained him so that he could die for us who are sinners all the time with a purpose, with a work, with a definition, with a meaning. So are we being again taken into be holy and blameless, to be unreproachable or irreproachable, to be present at the witness born so that we could tell there is no real guile in us. There is no real ignorance in us. But rather we have to tell that we know doctrine. The shakal of the Hebrew understanding to expertise, to have an expert knowledge. In Jeremiah 3.15 we have a great word which many people cannot understand. After my own heart I shall send pastors or from my own heart I shall send pastors or shepherds. At least they will never understand the true meaning of a pastor teacher. Let me tell shepherds, the same quote quoted in Jeremiah, whose work is what? To give you knowledge and to make you understand. Knowledge is what? Gnosis, the Greek word, what you can take. And understanding is what? To make you an expert in the knowledge of shakal, that is Bible doctrine. Why the pastor teacher alone has been given now the authority besides evangelist. Evangelist for unbelievers to make them to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he truly presents the gospel because of our spiritual death condition. And many men do not even know what is the spiritual death condition. Originally God created man to have body, soul and spirit. A soul got wrapped up, shriveled up. Not physical death which happened there exactly. The spiritual that dying you shall die, to, or to die you shall die, the word which has to be translated in the Bible. The only solution, or the only solution to get back and to have that fellowship with God is to be born again. The spirit of human one which has been dead has to be activated again, has to be regenerated again. And that is what you can never do until unless you believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ as your only Savior. So that you can become again trichotomous from dichotomy. And you can understand doctrine. And no doctrine could go into your mind if you are an unbeliever. And no doctrine could be proclaimed by morals who call themselves they are great preachers like Zachariah, Sheikh Ahmad Didad, or anyone who thinks that he has a bona fide gift of a pastor teacher. Without believing in the Lord, they are great orators. But the true believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ alone knows. When he believes in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as his only personal Savior, he is born again. And I was born again like a newborn baby with the incorruptible word, not with the corruptible things of gold and silver, 
but with the pure word of the Lord, which has been taken for us to know, to understand the truth. What are you going to do? With this incorruptible word, you are going to form. And even Isaiah 40, verses 6 through 8, it tells to us, all flesh is grass. Proclaim to them it is his word alone that stands forever. And because of that word alone, our Lord has sent his son so that we could be really saved as being true believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and not gimmick. Some men do not know why they come for Christianity. Why they believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As they say, all gods are one. Let us believe in all gods. But my Lord is not gods. He is not God Almighty. About God or gods, what you can call, he is Lord God. A specific title to my Lord, Lord God. Woman, the Eve, missed it in the first time, repeating after Satan to proclaim only, only Lord, but not Lord God. And later on, the same thing fell in, a, in the minds of the men who followed, who have been born. And so many illogical, ill reasoning questions. Now, that, that, that time it was ignorance, not having the completed knowledge of doctrine. Now they have the original languages of the scriptures. These pastor teachers who do not study and teach and make the believer's life a meaningful one. These pastor teachers have taken to the core to tell. At one end, ignorance. On the other end, science. They want to prove, they want to understand Bible with the technology that is going along with signs. They want to show the power and they want to tell this could be the real one. <laughs> we really laugh at you. How foolish a man is. By science you can interpret the Bible. Your entire evolution of science, even after 100 years, which can go further, or into 1,000 years, which can go further, in much more sophisticated evolution of science, it cannot even pluck the real meaning of Bible doctrine from it. From every single word which has been written under the inspiration of God. Bible is not man-breathed, dear brethren, Theonustas. Or you can tell Andronustas. Andron means man, Nistas means breathing. But it is God-inspired word. That's why whenever you read or whenever you write something which has, been, which has been read for you by the men, it doesn't give you that essence. But whenever you write and you read in the inspiration of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the words written for us in the original language of the scriptures, you really have the power to teach. You really have the power to change. You really have each and everything that could be really not done under the influence of human intellectual energy. It is not epitimoi or epitomia. Just convincing not to change. But it is alanko. Which is really conviction to change so that you could get to know what is your guilt and you can now follow the real word of the Lord. Here in India what happens? A pastor teacher calls a new one whoever comes from other countries. And one among them was my friend. He had been to your service yesterday in a church and I asked what was the what was the reply of the pastor teacher over there. And then he said, I have seen his face really shrinked. Do you think the message what he has told has really changed him to shrink his face like that? Or ashamed his face like that? In his arrogance, he will never change. In his ignorance, he will never change. That is not the way, definitely, the work of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit. It is the guilt of him which says, I have called this man to teach me. If there are real changes, it would be tears in his eyes. To know what is the truth, to learn what is the truth. And that is Alanko. And Epitamo is what he has showed, ashamed. Epitamo will not change. The word of the Lord is alive and powerful. Why does we quote that in the beginning of our sermon? Or why does my human mentor, Robert Bunker Thieme, quote it in the beginning of the sermon? It is a living word. It transforms, it renovates. It gives that which is absolutely required for to know the truth. It changes to the highest principles of doctrine. 
It gives us a, a true life in this fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, on this day which our Lord, once again, if we could go back as we celebrate our birthdays, our anniversaries. Today is the anniversary of the church beginning day, exactly after the resurrection of my Lord. The 40 days over here teaching the kingdom of God. After that 40th day ascending into heaven, telling that the same way I went, the same way I'm going to come down again. And the 10 day silent gap. After the 10 day, the first day, the Pentecost, the 50th day, that's what men should know. Pentecost means it is a day of 50 count from the day of our resurrection of our Lord. The beginning of the church. And that great beginning is what today you and I should not, dear brethren. And men don't understand what is that great beginning of the church. If you could calculate, it is the great privilege for us to know the beginning of the church today. Exactly matching of the days, 16th May 2016. It is a practice in India. We write only the year ending with 1-6, the last two letters. We don't write 2016. And the fifth month, if you could note this is a 2016, we could write a 16 0 5, 16, a remarkable day for us to understand it. Exactly the days of 2,000 years back, the church, when it has been begun, this day was a great day for them to learn, to know, to understand, to realize. And the leaders became so powerful, so bold, though they were beaten with strips, though they were warned not to tell, they did not hold back the truth. Though they did not have the completed can of scripture, they couldn't. But they went on to tell, to preach, and to perform the miracles till the completion of can of scripture, the temper of our spiritual gifts, so that they could really stabilize them that they were from the authority of God. And now, after 2,000 years, what do we have? We have the pastor teacher given the bona fide gift by what? When he's teaching the word of the Lord. When you can have Alanka rather than Epitamo to run the word of the Lord and to teach. And you can know the people will really know and recognize the authority of you. And that authority could be formed only when you learn doctrine. And not by any other means, any other gimmicks or tricks. As this world wants to know what are the gimmicks and tricks. The pastor teacher has become today the cheapest gift of all. As was the tongues. The commonest gift, the vulgate gifts. It was a common one. Why it has become pastor teacher's gift today common? Men are learning what academic subjects, secular things, implementing that in the spiritual things, comparing that with the science, comparing that with the reasonings and experiences, comparing that with each and everything which doesn't have even a sense to make about the dispensations, comparing that which they think that we have learned great doctrine in our minds and we are coming here to teach you those great doctrines. And Psalms 26, sorry, Proverbs 26, 14 tells to us, the one who boasts of a false gift is like a one with the, with the clouds, but they don't have rain in that. What profit does it make? And do you know what is the sad part? The true bona fide gifted pastor teachers are not even having the integrity of what my country has, or what my country laborers have. Though they are multi religion in my country, our mother of all religions, the only thing which really hurts to us is they have not known the true Lord. If they would have known the true Lord, by the way, a Christian behaves on this earth, on this tour in India, they would have really been great believers than the believers who were there in the past. We need to learn a lesson from a laborer, a man who works. And this laborer tells on a site of construction where we construct our home. When you're given it for a contract, an engineer takes care and he appoints a watchman over there, and he's a watchman. And he told to the shock, which we could learn a lesson in that. So until and unless this home has been completed, it is mine. After it's complete, or if it has been completed, it is yours. The integrity of that laborer, he says that, I'm going to take care of this home as much as I take care of my own home. And I will see whatever I can do the best. 
And the day when you can come here for the opening ceremony of the home, to dedicate it to the Lord, to pray for it, till that time it is mine, afterwards it is yours. That is the work of an unbeliever laborer and his attitude on this earth to protect and to be honest in his work. And now I am telling this example to you all. This body, after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is a temple of Lord God Almighty. If our Lord has given us this bona fide spiritual gift of a pastor teacher in communicating the truth, do you know what it is? It is like that watchman attitude. Lord God, the Holy Spirit tells to us, till I finish my work and take you back home, it is mine. You cannot get your carnal or natural sukikas or sarkikas attitudes in me. I have been engraved into it. It is my property. It is I who live in it. And I want my works to be done to protect the best I can, the doctrine to get the greatest glory for Jehovah, which is due unto him, which I have to give back to him. And that is the attitude of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But do you know what we do? We say privately in your, or privately intruding into that, or intruding into it, by our roles in nature, grieving and squelching, and not making him to work properly in us, but causing him to grieve. Do you know how you can really grieve him and squelch him? By ignoring doctrine, that's how the best way will be. In Ephesians 5, 11 and 12, it tells to us, it teaches a great lesson for us. Because you're not putting to test that which is well-pleasing to Jehovah. You're not dokimazo, that which is absolutely required for God's divine nature and standards. And you go on being partakers with the ignorance of sin, with the darkness, that's what skotas, skotas means ignorance, which they do, and it is even harsh for us to speak the words that they have done in darkness of their understanding. A very, very, very great shame not to have the attitude of that laborer who is an unbeliever, to in his honesty, that I am ready to protect it till the day you are going to hand it over after the completion of the work. Because as I take care of my own home, so will be my home. And he literally said, this is my home, sir. If Lord God, the Holy Spirit can tell to us, this is my home, how many of us would really stand? Do you not know Psalms 119, 120 teaches to us? In fear of the Lord to stand before him, my whole body shatters, or in fact even it shatters out in shaking, trembling greater than that. Shatters out. Because we do not know that great Lord, nor we have understood that great Lord, nor we have known what is the power of that great Lord. We are playing gimmicks. That's why the pastor teacher have become cheapest. Like the tongues gift which was in the pre-canon period. And that cheapest, that's what many people cannot understand on the day of Pentecost. The tongues were like a fire upon their, upon their tongues which came out so that they can really speak now and they can make them to understand in their own languages. And tongues are not gibberishly emotionally movements what the people do today. At the one end, they are practicing these tongues. At the other end, they are practicing adultery and fornication in their own selfish bodies. And they call, we are having the Spirit of God in us. Do you think the Spirit of God allows you to make fornicate? Or to make adultery? Or to murder? It will not. It will rather give purity to restrict you to change. As you were earlier, now you are not. Now you are being born in light. Enlightenment should not be a, a tough task for you. So confess your sins and get back to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and learn doctrine, apply doctrine, no doctrine. And that's what it should be, the attitude of each and every believer in Christ. But men do not understand these things. They're not. They are never understanding these things. Because the pastor teacher is a failure. This great unique spiritual life will never be given for us after we go out. 
whichever may be the reason, death or rapture. We can never come back. As long as we have been kept alive on this earth, it is the body of God, it is the temple of God. And I'm not telling legalism, but rather I'm telling you to keep blameless your body, soul, and spirit. Use this body to the greater glory of Jehovah. If you are having enough strength, kneel down upon it and write Bible once. Not just read once, you have heard it right. Write Bible once. When the Lord has called us to be kings and priests, in Revelation 1.6, and in Deuteronomy 17.18, if there is a king, he has to write a copy of law to himself, and he has to give a copy of law to be corrected to the Levites. Then how much more each and every believer has been called as a king? Where is a written copy of Bible doctrine? Where have we written the same copycat? of the revealed, inspired God's word to honor him back. If you have enough energy, write it down upon your knees, not just sitting. And if Lord has appointed you to be a pastor teacher, you should write for the second time in the original languages of the interlinear one. Because it is his word that you have to preach. You cannot let go each and every word or alphabet of the Bible. In fact, even if you can think about only alphabet or word, I would say the dot comma, or even explanation in mark, or even bracketed information, you cannot let it go, dear brethren. It has a value, it has a significance, it has some information for us to be communicated. And to know and to understand it, you have to go back to the original languages of the scriptures, without which you cannot interpret the word, and the true purpose for the beginning of the church, the, the, from AD 33 till to the point of AD 96, in AD 70 there is a break. This great many years of 63 on this earth, the completed new doctrine of the church age, the mystery doctrine being revealed, the things pertaining to the acts of the apostle till to the point of the book of Revelation, everything got revealed and it has been completed. And the New Testament ends with Amen, blessed is the one. And the whole Testament ends with curse. The solid doctrine we are dealing with. And that is the beginning of the Pentecost of the church. Not this Pentecostal realm of the doctrine, what they're going to communicate. And gibberishly jumping, dancing. And some of the morons, baptism of the Holy Spirit, which they are not even able to understand. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not healing or miracles. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is that you have been united into the great royal family of God. By faith alone in Christ alone sealed until the day of redemption, delivered and been given one gift for you, at least minimum one. And that pastor teacher gift is not been given for a woman, take it granted, not in the past, nor in the future, not now as well. Woman doesn't have this communicational gift. Apostle Paul condemns them to tell, woman has not been given authority to have over men. But today, the Christendom has been ruined. The so-called pastor-teacher designation has been changed to reverend. And so-called reverend designation has been changed. Dear brethren, you believe it or not. To a point of understanding that which is not true. Bishops or popes. And it has been changed to such kind of a great extension. They are women preachers, women bishops, women reverends. And what does a woman do better? To add or to delete. She can learn a lesson from Eve. That which has to be there, she did not give. That which was not to be there, that she has given. Our Lord said not to eat, but she added, not even to touch. Our Lord said, Lord God, but she just left the word and she said, God or Lord, whichever may be the translation what you have, or Jehovah Elohim or Elohim Jehovah. But then to men love women today now for the reason to gain some financial support, some name, some credibility. Why? Simply to please men rather than God. Simply to obey men rather than God. Simply to make their traditions rather than following the true word of the Lord. Dear brethren, it is a great pain in our heart. 
the way they are grieving and squelching. They are not able to tell like that watchman who told that this home belongs now to Lord God Almighty, the Trinity, Lord God the Father indwelling in you, Lord God the Son indwelling in you, Lord God the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. And when Lord God the Holy Spirit take controls of you through a rebound, because there is not a man who can say, I have not sinned, either by thought, word, or deed, definitely he sins. And not to lose time, because the days are evil, but being wise, circumspectly walking, to take the purchase of time, and to go and to do the works of God. Our Lord has made every believer to be a royal priest. The priesthood of confession of his sins. So that they should not waste the time. And when he is confessing the sins, what does he do? He gets back into fellowship. Lord God, the Holy Spirit controls him. And when Lord God, the Holy Spirit controls him, then only the garbage of your soul could be cleansed. Your different mechanisms could be broken out. Your arrogant skills of self-justification, self-absorption, or self-deception could be washed out. Until and unless you learn doctrine, the garbage of your soul will not be taken out. And to learn doctrine, it is the pure ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to control us. The wrong translation of KJV to fill has really made many blunders of errors in the minds of the people today. Many blunders. The blunders leading them, water baptism as one, and Holy Ghost baptism as two, and some of the people like John the Baptism are the work of Jesus, our Christ, our Lord, baptism. The acts of apostles, they want to really distort. The teachings of Matthew, Mark, Luke, except the chapters of in June 13 to 17 of John, they want to mess it up. They do not want to look upon doctrine from Romans, or more specifically, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, they don't want to learn. They want to mess it up. All these things, the good news for us is, though we are celebrating the anniversary of the birthday of the church today, it could be very much intentionally told for you, or I am telling to you. So many years Bible has been completed. It has taken a long journey to get into our hands in the 15th century. After 15th century, 1611, the first translated version. And then on, going on to change, change, change. Today, as we have been born in free country India, our India got deliverance in 1947. And you know when was the first Telugu Bible got? 1954. That Bible has been given freedom. And why I'm telling about the Telugu people is because they have a history record. In one day, more than 2,000 people believed in the Lord and were baptized by two missionaries. And that record stands. And today, men do not understand what is that record. In comparison to those 3,000 people who believed in the Lord, how they could have baptized. In one of the commentary lessons by John Gill, he writes, Indians, and among the Indians, they were the Telgites. Now, the state divided into two parts. One is Simandra, the other one is Telangana. Earlier it was only one state, Andhra Pradesh. AP, what they can call. This is where the man who really reflected for doctrine. And this is where the man who really changed to believe in the Lord. And that record stands still. And this freedom Bible, what they can have in the country of freedom. Freedom for right, freedom for the religion, freedom for everything. As per their own customs. Not including others. Not going for conversions, but rather telling them the truth. And it is the privacy of the revolution, they believe it or not. They have the Bible in 1954, the freedom of India, 1947, and we, the believers, have been born in this era of in this season, a great season of time, to cause you to understand and to know. In this great freedom, Prior to that, we have the freedom of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, operating in us. How much more we need to be careful to understand this truth. Where is our liberty? Liberty is in the freedom of God. Where is your peace? Peace is in the teaching of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Not going for elevation of suffering through miracles or healings or tongues. No way, it cannot be. And many men do not understand this great reality of Bible doctrine. 
Many men cannot know what is this great work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. On the day beginning of the Pentecost, today after 2,000 years, or much more, 1970 or 80 years odd, because when it is 2033, you can call it as 2,000 years when the church began. Today in this time when our Lord has kept, what is our work, what is our privilege, what is our duty, what is our relationship? But men do not understand this simple truth. Because Christians are not able to understand the true life of virtue. Dear brethren, the life that has been laid down upon our shoulders is of a great value. We cannot waste our life in living that which is not true. We cannot think of the life that is not acceptable in the sight of God. The day the Pentecost of the church began. And today is the anniversary of that. Today is the church anniversary, dear brother, and you believe it or not, take it or not, or consider it or not. The church anniversary is today. And dear brethren, think over these issues. When Lord has sent us on this earth to do his work, are we doing it faithfully? Or for the sake of softness, we are changing the truth into a lie. You need to answer that at the judgment seat of Christ. When Lord could seem fit for us to send on this earth at this time of an era, and Lord knows why he has sent. If you are not able to know why Lord has sent you, the problem is with you because you have not known what is there in the Bible. You have not given your life to God. You have not known what are you, what is your future, what is exact terms and conditions for this church age believers. The 40 absolutes among that one irrevocable, 39 irrevocable and one revocable absolute, which is the filling of the Holy Spirit. When you sin, you lose it. To gain it back, you need to go back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy One, by the confession of your sins in the privacy of your priesthood. Even that our Lord has made a provision. But we are not able to understand this. Dear brethren, think over this as we shall continue. Because we have much more to learn, to study and to know. And the tape is too long. I know many men may not listen to it. But I would only suggest today is a day, birthday of the church, of the church age. Think over it as we shall come back and continue in the next tape. Father, grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship through thy word. We thank thee for this great realm of thy church age beginning as we celebrate as anniversary of it. So that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified through this message. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.